Technology is the knowledge of techniques. These techniques have to be put into practice if they are to be useful. Maintenance or repair of an automobile engine or a computer hard disk cannot be achieved only by reading books. It is a hands-on job. Engineering and technology are closely interlinked because both ultimately deal with the application of scientific methods to practical matters. Uh, a sewing machine, for example, is first and foremost a technological product and only secondly an engineering product. Its scientific components are minor compared to these technological and engineering aspects. In the next few slides, the historical development of technology, sometimes with and sometimes without an engineering or even scientific background, will be presented. Tools used by early man were usually created by trial and error. The wheel itself was probably a serendipitous invention. The more developed a civilization, the greater its need for and development of technology. As the world population increased, more efficient production of all human requirements resulted in the development of more technology. Whether it stems from the desire to survive, or whether it is a spark embedded in the nature of man, tool making seems to come somewhat easily to men and women. Where Aristotle said, man is an animal that talks, Benjamin Franklin said, man is a tool making animal. Franklin, as an inventor, knew what he was talking about. The tools shown in this slide are prehistoric and somewhat primitive. They may have served their purpose of scraping and cutting, but at that time tool making tools had not yet been developed, and so only stone was used to shape other bits of stone. The desire within mankind to travel and to see other places is ancient, but in those times it was also augmented by the need to barter food and commodities, to carry drinking water and so on. The next few slides illustrate the importance of animal power as well as human power for transportation purposes. Older than the pyramids of Egypt, shown in this slide, the use of the camel to transport men and goods is ancient indeed. Camel and camels are mentioned over 60 times in the Bible. Not as celebrated as the camel, but as sturdy and manageable, the elephant is a beast of burden in many parts of Asia such as Bangladesh, Burma, Thailand and Ceylon. In Europe, as well as in the Middle East and elsewhere, ladies of property travelling for business or for visiting relatives within reasonable distances used to be transported till about 100 years ago in litters like these carried by four men. Even the needs of early man were not always easy to provide. Pottery and glass for food and drink, receptacles of all kinds, clothes to protect the body from the elements, and shelter, all these required technology. A simple life is perhaps not that simple after all. For storage purposes in early times, large vessels were required. The Japanese have always excelled at pottery and ceramics. Grains or oil could perhaps have been kept in this large container. 
Whereas one man may be able to provide food for himself, providing food for a whole community necessitates organization as well as efficiency. Agriculture came into being thousands of years ago because systems for producing food were required. This also meant that tools were required for digging and plowing. Hence, technology came very early into the picture. It is difficult to date the origins of agriculture. However, various artifacts are occasionally uncovered in archaeological excavations that suggest that mankind systematized agriculture many thousands of years ago. The hoe is a basic agricultural tool. Different types of hoes are often found in many parts of the world and sketches of some of these implements are shown in the present slide. The plough prepares the earth in furrows for the planting of seeds. Animal power is still used for ploughing in many parts of the world. The stone axe was not perhaps as sharp as the one with the metal blade that came much later. However, for skinning animals and for chopping down small trees, it was fairly adequate. Early man discovered, maybe half a million years ago, that the flesh needed protection from both the heat and the cold. No hard facts are available on this matter, but researchers suggest that the use of some kind of clothing is definitely prehistoric. It must be pointed out here that in ancient times, cold weather was a bigger threat than the heat. Furs and straw were used as insulating materials for the body. Clothing in the tropical regions of the earth tended to be light. The idea of producing cloth goes back a long way indeed. Types of textiles woven from cotton and wool go back several thousand years in the Middle East and in South Asia. Looms enable threads in two perpendicular directions to be woven into fabric. Even today woolen cloth woven by hand is considered desirable as it is not as stiff as machine produced woolen fiber. Winters are mild and summers hot in Egypt and hence ancient clothing tended to be draped round the body with the arms and feet left bare. Style begins to emerge in the clothing of ancient Greece but it is otherwise quite similar to that of Egypt which of course lies just across the Mediterranean from Greece. This slide shows a porter carrying a heavy basket. It is a statue from ancient Egypt. However, times have not changed drastically and porters are to be found all over the world even today. Long ago, sellers of fruit, vegetables and other commodities in the streets began to discover the advantage of wooden yokes for carrying loads that could be balanced on the human back or shoulder. This slide from ancient Egypt shows us that over the centuries important people have always found ways to avoid walking. Chariots are familiar to us from Hollywood historical films as great racing vehicles but in fact they were primarily used in warfare by the Romans. Early technology also developed the water wheel. The current of the water flow rotated a large wheel with buckets which filled with water at the bottom. The water was then emptied into a channel situated at the top level of the water wheel. Water wheels still exist in the Middle East and elsewhere. 
The use of wind power goes back many centuries. Mills for grinding wheat and corn are to be found in many countries of the world. Technology produced the first mechanical calculator called the abacus nearly 4,500 years ago. Amazing mathematical operations can be performed even today by shopkeepers, especially in China and Japan, on the abacus. European science discovered several hundred years ago that with two different metals and an electrolyte, which is normally an acidic solution, a current can be generated. The Baghdad battery of over a thousand years ago remains a bit of a mystery. For ages of human history, time was not money and had little value. However, a few thousand years ago, man discovered that the passage of time could be followed by the shadow cast by a rod on a sundial. Measuring the flow of water also resulted in water clocks that came later. The Chinese produced mechanical clocks about 1200 years ago. Of course, technology was required to produce the levers and the mechanisms that enabled such clocks to work. It is a common observation that rays of the sun slowly bleach the colors of various fabrics like tents, sheets and cloth. The ancient Egyptians used to lighten the color of clothing by leaving it out in the hot Egyptian sun to get bleached. Gunpowder was produced in China 1700 years ago. Various Turkish tribes brought gunpowder to the Middle East over the centuries from where it spread to Europe. In the old world, the desire to transmute base metals into gold and the desire to discover the drink that made man immortal did not succeed, but they resulted in the development of chemistry as we know it today. As we move into relatively more modern times, the achievements of technology become more and more impressive. In the 16th century, there lived a remarkable engineer and technologist in the Ottoman Empire called Takiyad-Din. This slide shows some of the achievements of this great engineer. The Ottoman Turks stormed Constantinople and conquered it in 1453. The weaponry they possessed like the huge cannon shown here in this slide, gave them a distinct advantage over their rivals. Technology is such an intimate component of our daily lives that it is taken for granted. A small glitch in the working of technology and we are upset, not appreciating that this situation is the result of centuries of work. The modern period for science and technology began after the end of the so-called Dark Ages in Europe. Civilization in Europe was quite primitive between 400 AD and 1200 AD. Slowly, beginning in Italy, a process of awakening began in Europe with the establishment of the University of Bologna in 1088 AD. Oxford followed in 1096 AD. It took many, many decades before these and other universities started to produce real knowledge. Theoretical work is sometimes easier than practical or applied work. So, science progressed faster than technology after the Renaissance. Today, these roles are sometimes reversed short-sighted as well as long-sighted people in Europe had virtually no relief until Marco Polo went to China and saw people wearing glasses in 1270 AD. 
Immediately afterwards, the Italians made the first eyeglasses in 1286 AD. In hindsight, one would have thought that the world would not need to wait till the 13th century for eyeglasses. But apart from manufacturing the lenses, the glasses need a high level of technology both for the frame and the mounting. Science is often overtaken by technology, as the Wright brothers showed in 1903 at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Today, science, engineering and technology often go hand in hand. In a new plane called the Wright Model A flyer, Wilbur Wright flew around the Statue of Liberty on September the 29th, 1909, as depicted in this slide. Such feats gave aviation much publicity and interest in air travel grew by leaps and bounds. Orville and Wilbur Wright were high school dropouts but they gained great mechanical skills by repairing bicycles of several different kinds. They also had much experience with gliders and thus they had become gifted technologists. This slide depicts the statue of Wilbur explaining the phenomenon of wing warping to his brother Orville. It stands in Dayton, Ohio the home of the Wright brothers. Now that we have established the important role of technology today, it is time to look at the overall development of technology in what we will term the last 1000 years or so. Let us briefly review some of the highlights of this period. The level of technology provides some indication of just how much a country or society has progressed from a strictly agricultural level. All socio-economic development is actually permeated by technology at all levels. The Chinese use ideograms or picture words instead of a regular alphabet. Each ideogram requires many strokes of the pen or brush. Hence, printing, using wooden blocks, came early to China, nearly 1200 years ago. Printing, as opposed to calligraphy or copywriting, enables limitless duplication of any text. This increases the dissemination of knowledge and also brings down unit costs. As with the Middle East and elsewhere, Europe also had its scribes and calligraphers until Gutenberg began using both movable type and block type in the 15th century. He was followed by Caxton and others. The Bible was the first complete book printed and published by Gutenberg. Each letter of the alphabet, in his case German in the Gothic style, had to be produced from dyes and molten lead. Some cultures are always more conservative than others. The scribes and calligraphers in the Middle East thought that the printing press would deprive them of their livelihood. Therefore, it was not until 1729 that the first printed work in Turkish was produced. Ibrahim Mutaferica was born in 1674 in present-day Romania and died in 1745 in Istanbul. 
He served in the Ottoman diplomatic service for many years. Initially, his press was allowed to print only non-religious books. Even today, the number of books and newspapers published per million of population is an indication of the educational level of a country. Currently, soft copies of books are replacing hard copies, but this does not negate the overall argument. The first large book printed with movable type by Ibrahim Mutaferika was a large Arabic to Turkish dictionary. This page shows that the publication of the book was officially approved. Copies of this book still exist and are sold at huge prices. The transfer of science is straightforward and requires only brain power. The transfer of technology is linked with technical know-how and ability. If technology is to be transferred successfully, the recipient must also have attained a level capable of absorbing the received technology. In the last part of the 19th century, Japan's example of technology transfer within a couple of generations is an outstanding example of what may be achieved by a dedicated and hard-working nation. Commodore Perry's expedition to Japan in 1853 opened up Japan to the world. The awesome sight of the huge American warships woke up the Japanese and they began to work hard to catch up with the rest of the world. All machines are dependent on sources of power if they have to work. In the 17th century, steam power began to be employed in England. Water in boilers was heated and its volume increased as it turned to steam. This expansion was used to drive mechanical components in engines. A double acting engine means that steam was supplied to the engine cylinder on both sides of the piston. This was an advance on the earlier single acting engine. By contrast, even today, most internal combustion engines have single acting cylinders. Motion taking place on both sides of a central location can be converted into rotatory motion by means of a crankshaft. Old railroad steam engines were equipped with such shafts. For the efficient and swift production of all varieties of cloth, steam power replaced manual labor over a hundred years back, both in Europe and in North America. There is no rectilinear or straight line motion in turbines, only rotatory motion. The fan-like blades in a steam turbine rotate when steam flows over them. Such turbines were used in the past to produce electricity in generators. Compare, if you will, the diameter of the turbine with the height of the technician shown in this slide. Power generation needs such large-scale devices. For a hundred years and more, steamships crisscrossed the oceans carrying goods and passengers. Some were very large indeed, like the ill-fated Titanic which sank in 1912 on its maiden voyage. The Titanic had a length of 883 feet. This slide shows a typical ordinary steamship of the time. Steam power drove the railroad engines that helped weld the United States into one large country. The steam engine was often affectionately called the Iron Horse. Human power 
was not totally forgotten in the age of steam, just as it is not totally forgotten today. The penny farthing was so called because the farthing was a smaller coin than the penny. These bicycles became popular in Europe and North America in the 1890s. There has never been any shortage of technological talent in the United States. The moving stairs or escalator is a US invention dating back over 110 years. Another US invention that has overtaken the world is the safety razor, which is now being overtaken by lighter and multi-blade designs. Gillette is a word understood internationally. Even the conservative concise Oxford Dictionary lists Hoover as a noun, a make of vacuum cleaner, and as a verb, as in to hoover a carpet. The polygraph or lie detector is a specialist forensic device. Many people claim to have invented or manufactured the polygraph. Some researchers even claim that it is often an unreliable tool. It may be observed that women technologists were responsible for two of the advances mentioned here. Other 20th century inventions credited to women include the dishwasher, the correction white liquid for typing errors, Kevlar, the COBOL computer language and chocolate chip cookies. The list of important 20th century inventions is impressive and apparently endless. Television, for good or evil, must rank as one of the most important technological developments of all time. From the photocopier to freeze-dried coffee, the list of major inventions just rolls on and on. Teflon was invented in 1938 and astute politicians sometimes do get the label Teflon Senator. All construction, whether of buildings or roads or dams, is dependent on technology. Without bulldozers for earth moving, construction would slow down greatly. Hoes are very important for excavation because of their mobility and their versatility. One hoe is worth more than a hundred men as far as labor output is concerned. Prefabricated, pre-designed and assembled steel beams and girders, as shown in this slide, cut down both on construction time and construction costs. But for advanced technology, the level of construction in steel shown in this slide would not be feasible or even possible. Technology broadens our horizons and makes builders aim higher. Once upon a time, simple oil rigs like the one shown in this slide dominated the US horizon from Pennsylvania to California. These rigs could only extract oil from rather shallow depths. In our times, sophisticated equipment and instrumentation enable oil extraction from deep strata under the ocean by means of large offshore platforms. Electricity and electrical power are the lifeblood of our world today. Even one day of power outage would result in unbearable economic losses. Nuclear power is ultimately obtained from the splitting of heavy atoms. The science for atomic fission 
was worked out by Rutherford, Einstein and others. However, even today, the technology involved is still far from perfect. Before atomic fission was used for civilian nuclear power, it was used as a devastating weapon. The manufacture and delivery systems for the atomic bomb involved ultra-high level technology. Nothing in this world comes free. Nuclear power does hold out much promise but brings its own problems of safety and also the problem of the disposal of large quantities of radioactive waste. A nuclear power plant is a complicated production site. It contains the nuclear reactor, the containment building, generators, turbines, cooling towers and the electrical power grid. The nuclear accident in 1979 at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania heightened the sensitivities of both technical and non-technical people about the dangers that nuclear processes can sometimes create. The March 2011 earthquake in Japan and the tsunami generated by it paralyzed the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Much radioactive emission leaked into the atmosphere. Today, some of the roles that separated scientists from engineers and engineers from technologists in the past appear to be merging. This may cause some complications because each discipline has to learn the skills of the other two. Furthermore, Specialized roles are being broadened out to include economics, human relations and in some cases even marketing skills, research and advertising. This slide tells a story, not elegantly perhaps, but in a down-to-earth fashion. The moral of the story is that we cannot fight computers we have to learn and adapt. All right, this title is a bit of an exaggeration. But computers are too valuable to be ignored. They do not perhaps rule the world directly, but they do shape and govern the actions and decisions of those who rule the world. The world of computers has resulted in people like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs and others becoming household names. It is probably fair to say that there is more technological than scientific development in the computers of today. Steve Jobs is an example of a modern day American icon. His Syrian father and American mother gave him up for adoption. His adopted father found that Steve had a great talent for electronics. Steve did not take to any formal education, but he founded Apple later with Steve Wozniak and the rest is history. This slide summarizes some of the new ideas that Steve Jobs was able to transform into reality. All these technological wonders sold and are selling in the millions. The population of the world continues to grow and so do problems that beset humanity. Health and education at all levels pose serious problems that require basic research if they are to be solved at all. Scientific discoveries take some time to filter down and enter the realm of application, but the impact of technology can often be almost instantaneous, like the computer or the cell phone. Creative technological inventions 
will always be in great demand. For those who like to visualize practical applications, who are problem solvers, who are in the good old fashioned term, skillful with their hands, those who like to say, I can make this work better, the possibilities of a technological career should definitely be explored. Technologists should not sacrifice many tomorrows for the sake of a rich and profitable today. Everyone is a passenger on spaceship Earth. We should think not for one group or one nation, but for all mankind.